All right, so uh, I gave you some time for you guys to look at the questions. Uh, any particular questions that you want us to look at from uh, AP star questions on implicit differentiation? Yes? 13. 13, let's go for 13 first. Okay. So, uh, in case of number 13, uh, what they're asking us to do is to find the second derivative, right? Second derivative as in, I need to find the first derivative first, and then take the derivative again, just like any other things, right? So in order for me to find the first derivative, I'll be taking the derivative of this one implicitly. So we get 2x plus 2y, but since I'm taking the derivative of y, I'll be ending with dy dx. And then the other side is equal to 25. So when I uh, rewrite the expression, uh, solving for dy over dx, what we end up getting is negative 2x over 2y. You can see that, right? And 2's cancels away. We end up getting negative x over y. Now then, second derivative now becomes taking the derivative of that. So obviously, I'll be using the what? Quotient rule here, right? Derivative of the top, which becomes negative 1 times y. And then minus top times negative x, derivative of y, which is dy over dx, all over denominator y squared. You good? So here, what they have given us was, uh, they, yeah. they gave us the value of x and y. So that was good. But I also need the value for dy over dx. So what is dy over dx? When x and y values are 4 and 3. So when I plug that in, or when I plug that in, negative 4 over 3. Right? That's what I'll end up getting. So now I have all three values that I need to evaluate this one. So here, what do we end up getting, guys? Negative 1 times uh, y value, which is equal to 3, minus, and then minus, minus becomes plus, and x value was equal to 4, and dy over dx was equal to negative 4 over 3, all over y value squared, so we get 9. So that becomes my answer. Okay? So what I can do is I can multiply top and bottom by 3 to simplify this one. Then I'd be end up getting negative 9, and here we have minus 16 over 27. So we get negative 25 over 27 becomes our final answer, which is choice A. Yeah, does that answer your question? Okay, good. Yes, ma'am. Two? Okay. So I'm going to just leave this one here a little bit so that you can see the entire page. And we'll be looking at number two. Alrighty. You can see that number two is slightly simpler than the first first question. Why? Because they already found the first derivative for us. You know, so here. They already found the first derivative. And they're looking for the second derivative. OK? When x equals 1, that's the given condition, then we know that x and y values are 1 and 2. Right? So let's try to evaluate this one. What are we end up getting, guys? What is the second derivative? Then we get 3y squared. Would you agree? Just like finding the derivative of any other terms. But we have to end with dy over dx. And 3 just disappears. So here, y value was 2, so 3 times 2 squared. Okay? But what is dy over dx? Oh, I actually have to find that one. So here, y value was 2, so then this one would have been 2 cubed plus 3. So you get what do we get, guys? That's 8, 3, 11. So we get 11 
is what we end up getting. So I'm going to multiply that by 11. How about that, guys? So we get 12 times 11. Is that 132? So therefore, our answer would have been choice C. Are we okay so far? Yeah? Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah? Okay. Yes, sir. And then I'm going to come to you. 17. 17. All right. So as you guys can see, number, even number 17 is somewhat similar to the other one. When we want to find the second derivative, what are we going to do? We're going to solve for first derivative first, okay? And then uh, take the derivative of that again. So in this case, uh, I mean, it was already done somewhat, right? But if you want to solve for the first derivative, I'll be dividing each side by this. So we get dy over dx would have been equal to 2x minus y divided by that expression, x plus 2y. How about that, guys? Is it okay? Now, if I want to find the second derivative, I need to find the derivative of this one. So derivative of top first. So we get 2 minus dy over dx times the bottom as it is, x plus 2y. Right? And then minus top one as it is, 2x minus y. And then derivative of the bottom. So we get what? 1 plus 2 dy over dx. Divide whole thing by denominator squared. So x plus 2y squared. How about that, guys? You good? So. Once we got to this point, then what are we going to do? We have to plug in all the values. I know x and y because they told us that it was a 3 and 0. Uh, another, another information that I need is dy over dx. So let me try to figure that one out over here. So when you plug in 3 in place of x, y value becomes, when y value becomes 0, these two simply disappears. So we get 2 times 3 over 3, which becomes 2. So 2 is our dy over dx. So let us try to plug in all those values now. So here we get two minus, oh, that's two. dy, dy, uh, dy over dx was equal to two. Then I don't really care what goes in here. It will all cancel things away because we have zero. Would you agree? Now, second one, minus two times three minus zero and then one plus two times two divide whole thing by three plus two times zero squared so that's basically what we end up getting you good notice that i didn't have to do anything over here because this portion is equal to zero right that's what i that's why i skipped that portion now then here, our first term becomes 0, so we have, this is 6, and that's 5, so total what? Minus 30, and this becomes uh, 2 disappears, right? So we get 3 squared, we get 9. So when you divide the top and bottom by 3, we get what? Negative 10 over 3. So uh, I'm looking for negative 10 over 3, choice A would have been D, and so. How about that, guys? Is it okay? Yeah. So I think uh, the, so far, a few questions that we have solved, in order for you to find the uh, second derivative, right? what are we going to do? You're going to solve for the first derivative first, right? and then move on. So that's basically what we're trying to do. And in every case, we had to find the value of dy over dx as well in the middle. All right? Yes? Six. All right. By the way, as you guys know, I uh, uh, list the topics 
that I'll be using for this third exam, right? Uh, in terms of dates, and then one uh, portion that I'm going to revive, all right? All right, you guys. So here we have uh, impl uh, implicit differentiation, but we have x and y instead of tangent. Uh, obviously, this one is calling for chain rule, isn't it? But when you're doing the chain rule, what do you do? You do not touch the inner expressions, right? So what we end up doing is, uh, first, when I'm looking at the derivative of outer layer, tangent. So what do we end up getting, guys? That becomes uh, secant square and leave the inside expression alone, x, y. Is that clear, guys? That's the first time, the first layer. And then I have to take the derivative of inner expression, which now I have to use the product rule because we have x and y. So we get derivative of x, which becomes 1 times y, right? And plus x times the derivative of y, we get dy over dx here. And I'm done on my left side. On my right side, derivative of x becomes 1. All right, so uh, now how will I be able to figure out dy over dx, right? There are many ways which we can do. Uh, one of the ways is I can just divide by this expression, right? Or another thing that I can do is I can multiply this one in both places and then bring this term over to the other and then divide by the coefficient of dy over dx. I can do both ways, okay? Now, <clears throat> I'm looking through this one, choices, multiple choices, and try to see which method I'll be doing. But I see a few expressions with x on the bottom. How can I get x on the bottom if I have, uh, if I have, yeah, can somebody dance over there? It's a motion sensitive. Thanks, man. <laughs> so in, in multi-class, we only have eight people in that class. So what's happening is so, uh, in the middle, because they're all studious, just, you know, solving the problem. And they're all congregating in the front somewhere. So somebody always have to go back and then dance in the middle of the class. So today was you. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so notice that I'm not trying to call out your names. That's intentional, by the way. All right, so here, uh, by looking at the uh, structure of the choices, you know what? I'm going to divide each side by secant squared first. So then my coefficient will be simply x, right? That's my plan. Then my, uh, what I end up getting is uh, y plus x dy over dx. Since I'm dividing by secant squared, what do I end up getting on the other side? Reciprocal of secant, which is what? Cosine, that's right. So we're going to get cosine squared x, y. How about that, guys? Right? And then, of course, I'll be subtracting y from both sides. So we get x dy dx is equal to cosine squared x, y minus y. How about that, guys? Right? And then I'll be dividing both sides by x. So dy over dx would be this expression divide whole thing by x. So uh, it seems like our choice E would have been our answer. How about that, guys? Is that okay? Yes, but it is possible that you, you were able to multiply secant squared to both places first. You could have done that. There's nothing wrong with it. Is that clear, guys? Uh, I just paused a little bit and then looked at the multiple choices because this, if this one were to be the free response question, then you could have done either way. That's perfectly fine, right? I just did it this particular method only because, you know, uh, this way, only because I said the uh, multiple choices and the multiple choices happen to have x's on the denominator. That's why I wanted to simulate that structure, right? So that's why I chose this method. All right, uh, next, yes? Mm -hmm. uh, 27. 27. Got it. Twenty-seven is similar to the question which just which we just have done, right? But what they are uh, what they are trying to do is they're trying to uh, look for the value of dy over dx, right? So I'm going to do this one a little bit differently. In many cases, if I'm looking for dy over dx, I actually solved for dy over dx, didn't I? One side is dy over dx, isolated. Everything else is on the other side. Yes, you know what? We can do that. 
But in this question, one thing that's different about this one is that they gave you the x and y values, right? They gave you the x and y values. So uh, watch what we're about to do here, guys. When you take the derivative of cosine of xy, what are we going to get? We will get what? Negative sine of xy. And then we will have what? y plus x dy over dx. How about that, guys? Would you agree? So similar to uh, our last problem. And my right side, on the other hand, will become dy over dx. How about that, guys? Is it OK? So uh, if I'm looking for dy over dx, what I would have done is, in this case, I would be distributing negative sign to both terms. That's what I would have done. And then bring the second term over to the other side so that I could have the terms with dy over dx, uh, dy over dx and on one side and factor out the dy over dx and then divide. That's what I would have done if I'm solving for dy over dx. Is that clear, guys? But in this case, one thing that's uh, different about this is that they gave, you, they gave us the numerical values. So uh, many people find it to be a little bit easier by plugging in the numer numerical values here and then trying to solve for dy over dx because that seems to be a little bit uh, less of a work for some people. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can somebody else uh, explain why do I have this one? This is the same thing, uh, same thing as what I just have done in the previous question. Exactly the same thing. Why did I do this? Yes. Product rule, that's right. Of the derivative of inner expression. I'm doing the chain rule here, isn't it? Right? Uh, this is exactly the same thing as what I just have done here, right? Right. So if you understood this one, this is exactly the same. Nothing much is different, idea-wise, right? Numbers are different. But. All right. So what I'll be doing is I'm going to plug in the values first. Okay. So that's a little bit different, right? Instead of me solving for dy over dx, I will be plugging in pi over two and then one in place of x and y. So what do we end up getting, guys? So here I'll be getting negative sign. Pi over 2 times 1 gets me simply pi over 2. How about that, guys? Now, here y equals 1 plus x, x equals a pi over 2, right? And then dy over dx equals dy over dx. Are we good so far? But well, wait a minute, guys. What is sine of pi over 2? That's equal to 1. So this now simplifies into negative 1. Is that clear, guys? So when I distribute negative 1 to both sides, what I end up getting is negative 1 minus pi over 2 dy over dx equals dy over dx. So then uh, can you guys see that simplify, solving for dy over dx in this case seems to be much simpler than solving for dy over dx over here? for many people. So what I'll be doing is I'll be moving this term over to the other side, so I'll be end up getting negative 1, which is equal to what? dy over dx. And when I factor out dy over dx from that term, I'll be end up getting 1 here and plus pi over 2. How about that, guys? You good? So therefore, my final answer becomes dy over dx is equal to negative 1 over 1 plus pi over 2. And so this is my complex fraction answer, fraction within a fraction. And I'm looking at my choices. There's no such complex fractions. So what I'll be doing is I'm going to simplify this complex fraction. What will I be doing? I'll be multiplying top and bottom by what? 2, the common denominator. So here I'll be getting multiplying by 2, multiplying this one by 2. So what we end up getting is negative 2, right? And 2 plus pi. So that becomes my answer. And hopefully I can find something similar to that. Yeah. How about that, guys? Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like choice B has to be my answer. How about that, guys? OK? Does that answer your question? I forgot. Yeah? OK. Next, yes. 35. 35? All right, all right. Let me just give you a full page for a second. And then we're going to go for the, uh, we're going to go for number 35. Okay, we have about 
Eight minutes, nine minutes, nine minutes. All righty, guys. So number 35. Okay. Ooh, thank you for asking, but by the way, uh, actually, you know what? We kind of did this one, right? So let me just uh, do this one for you. Yeah, sometimes the, you know, uh, AP classroom is a little bit weird. Uh, this is not quite implicit differentiation, but they threw that question in. <laughs> but we'll do it anyway as a review. How about that? All right, guys. So we want to find the derivative. So how are we going to find the derivative? Oh, wait a minute, guys. If you remember, we talked about a to the x. What is the derivative of a to the x? I talked about this, this, uh, this idea one time previously, because I'm going to, go, I'm going to come back to this idea more. Uh, in uh, like a week or two later, okay? But I mentioned this one one time. Does anybody remember the rule for the derivative of a to the x? Somebody's trying to look for the notes. Are you trying to look for the notes? Okay. Anybody remember? Oh, yes. You have to say e to the k. Oh, okay, okay. That was a derivation. Yes, that's right. We converted this one to e to the uh, another expression. That's exactly what we have done. Okay, but does anybody remember the rules? If you don't remember the rules, then I'll do that for you. Do you remember the rules? A, it's okay. And a to the and something like that. And you mean a, uh, not, not an a? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it was this. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Thank you, thank you. You see, the no, names are not recorded, so we have no idea who's who. <laughs> right? So I used to be more active on uploading the math note, uh, math lessons uh, years ago, and then I didn't for a long time. And then, but somehow, number grew a little bit at a time. It used to be like 600 people, and then 1,000, 1,300. I don't know why. <laughs> Anyway, let's look at this one. If you want to uh, look at the derivation, uh, like it was mentioned here before, uh, I want you to look at this one. Uh, what we have done was we wanted to rewrite a to the x in e to the uh, particular expression, wasn't it? So in fact, well, at the time what we talked about was this. This in fact can be written as e to the, uh, what you call it, uh, x ln of a. That was the conversion. And you can see why, and then when you take the derivative by the chain, well, then you'll be able to get this one. Is that clear, guys? So then, in this case, what do we end up getting, guys? When you take the derivative, first one is 5x to the fourth. Of course, right? Of course, that's simple. But the second one will be what? Minus 5 to the x times ln of 5. That's it. It's simply memorization. What do we end up getting, guys? Choice. D becomes the answer. Are we good so far? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, I think I did one time, right? One time. Just two. Uh, but we will, uh, we will do this one more extensively uh, in about a week or so. For this upcoming exam, you're not responsible for this because I don't, I mean, I did two problems. How about that now? <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm not going to uh, give you this one. But e to the anything is still possible, right? Okay. And then uh, I will be including this particular topic. Uh, not uh, uh, when the base is not e, right? a to the x power, probably not for this coming exam, but for one or two exams later. Okay. I'll let you know when that happens, right? Okay, next question. Yes, sir, and then yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. One? One? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it took you a long time to go for one. <laughs> All right. Number one. So they're looking for slope of the line tangent. So slope of the line tangent, essentially what we're looking for is the for value of the first derivative. Would you agree? At that location. So what we're gonna be doing is this. This is simply looking for dy over dx, such that x equals two and y equal to zero. That's the question. 
So what I'll be doing is, I will be taking the derivative of this. What do we get, guys? Y becomes dy over dx, and two disappears, equals. What's the derivative of x squared over two? Simply becomes x, right? And then what's the derivative of neg uh, minus two sine y? So minus two cosine y, isn't it? But I'm not done, because by the chain rule idea, I have to multiply by dy over dx. Because I'm looking for the numerical value, would you agree? Because I'm looking for numerical value, instead of me solving for dy over dx, what will I be doing? I'm just gonna plug in the values and then find the value of dy over dx. Is that okay? So what do I end up getting, guys? I'm replacing two for x and zero for y. So what we end up getting here is dy over dx is equal to two minus two cosine zero times dy over dx. How about that, guys, right? And as we know, what is cosine of zero? That's equal to one, right? So this one becomes two minus two dy over dx. Sometimes when I, when I uh, scroll through the Facebook, they talk about this kind of math and ooh, what's the answer? It's, <laughs> it's kind of like, and the people are debating on the chat, you know, messages, like comments, I guess. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, come on, people. Anyways, so in this case, what, what am I getting, guys? Are we getting uh, three dy over dx equals two, would you agree? By bringing that term over, so ultimately, dy over dx becomes what? Two over three. How about that, guys? Choice D becomes the answer. Let me just give you the full picture. How about that? Are we good? Yeah. Are you guys still responsible for uh, getting the equation of the uh, tangent line and normal line? Yes, you know, using the implicit differ differentiation. So one thing about math is that, you know, all the topics are connected any anyway, you know, so it's, it's hard for you to just cut, draw the line. Okay, nothing will come up from here. You know, it's really, really tough because they're all connected. You know, so just wanted to let you guys know. Can I still give you the uh, derivative of some exponential function, but in the in form of the limit definition? Yes, I can. You know, because that's, so everything is connected. Just, you know, just wanted to let you guys know, right? Next question was, uh, yeah, what was your question? Mm -hmm. Nine. Nine. Good morning, Austin High School. Happy Friday. Today is the first day of the episode. Of the so party. that's it. It's place, it's place, it's place 